Hi, I'm Luke, this is Paves Garage. On this video, we're gonna have a go at recreating the Pajero Evo's fuel filler door cover out of carbon fiber. So unfortunately in the rollover, I lost my fuel filler door cap. Uh, but one of the only other Pajero Evo owners in Brisbane uh, was kind enough to lend me his fuel filler door to try and recreate it out of carbon fibre. The process I'm going to be using is called resin infusion moulding, which can be broadly broken up into two steps. First one being creating a tool or a mould out of the original part, and then creating the carbon fibre piece out of that mould. So the intent of this video isn't for it to be a complete guide on how to do resin infusion moulding. I'm going to be sort of glossing over a lot of the steps, uh, but I will focus in on areas which I had difficulty with. Uh, the best place to get a guide for, for doing resin infusion moulding is from Easy Composites in the UK, and I'll leave a link to their videos in the description below where they recreate a carbon fibre bonnet. And interesting side note, one of the guys who works there owns a Pajero Evo and bought a set of shocks from me, which is pretty cool. So to give you a really broad process of how the tooling process is going to work, first thing we need to do is, with the original part, creating a flange around it, which I'm going to do with this uh, basically plastic poster card. With the flange around it, I'm then going to uh, wax it up using some Miracle Gloss Release Wax, and then over the top of that, I'm going to be painting a whole bunch of tooling gel coat. On top of the tooling gel coat, to reinforce it, I'll be placing a whole bunch of fiberglass, uh, which is going to be uh, infused with some general purpose epoxy. Let's get into it. So once again, I'm a complete rookie when it comes to making carbon fibre parts. I've only made three or four pieces so far, and uh, most of them have been complete failures. Making these pieces is a very long process uh, with a lot of steps in it, and just getting one step ever so slightly wrong can result in your entire part being ruined. So the vacuum bagging process requires that you create a flange around the outside of your part, which then gives you an area to stick down the vacuum bag onto. The plastic postcard I'm using is available at just about any office supply store and I'm going to be chopping it up and then hot gluing it to the outside of the part. With a flange, bigger is better. Uh, I'll try to make them at least 5 to 10 centimetres. There's really no right or wrong way to stick the postcard onto the part, uh, but with the sort of unique and complex shape of this thing, I found that using a hot glue gun was best. Right, now I've made an extremely rough flange. Uh, I think next time I do it, I'm gonna hire a two-year-old because a two-year-old could probably do a better job. Uh, but it will function. Plan is to just put a whole bunch of plasticine around the edge uh, to create a uh, bit of a flange. So we've always got a positive draft angle. Uh, so the tool doesn't actually stick or mechanically lock to the part. Now for this step, the Easy Composites tutorial talks about using something called filleting putty. I couldn't find an equivalent product in Australia, so I ended up just using some plasticine, which you can get from pretty much any arts and crafts store. And again, the whole purpose of this step is to make sure that there's no areas on the part which are going to cause the mould to lock onto it. Right, with that complete, the next thing we're going to do is uh, give this part just one more quick polish and then go over it with some mould release wax. The release wax I'm using is called Miracle Gloss. I got this from playwithcarbon.com, which is an online store based in New South Wales, Australia. And these are the guys I've used to get all of my carbon fibre supplies, which you're going to see in this video. Applying the release wax is just a matter of wiping it on with an applicator sponge very thoroughly, and then wiping it off with a microfiber cloth, and doing this about five times over. I initially thought that doing five coats of release wax was going to be overkill, uh, but did find that a few of my parts stuck to the inside of the mould, which just completely ruined them when I tried to pull them out. So now I'm more than happy to take the extra time to begin with to make sure the parts aren't destroyed in the end. Now with the release agent applied, the next step is to apply a tooling gel coat. This stuff goes over the part and then creates the inside of the mould. The gel coat I'm using comes in two parts. The blue tooling gel coat itself, which is a fairly thick paste which has a consistency somewhat similar to toothpaste. And then a hardener which is mixed in at a ratio of 1 to 10. Because the paste is quite thick, it can be easy to leave some of the parts of the gel coat unmixed with the hardener if you're not scraping the sides and the bottom of the container thoroughly. And if any unmixed gel coat gets into your mould, that will completely ruin it. Now because the gel coat is quite a thick paste, it can be quite difficult to apply to a part evenly and without any bubbles in it. 
So just before applying it, I'm submerging it in a bit of hot water to make it a bit more liquidy. Now the gel coat is applied with a standard paintbrush, which I'm doing here quite daintily so I don't destroy the filleting putty. Now the aim of the gel coat is to get it up to a thickness of about 1 or 2 millimetres. Uh, that being said, I've always found sharp corners and moulds to be weak points, so I'll go over the corners first, and then come over them with a second layer once the rest of the mould has been painted, which just helps add a bit of extra strength. So we've uh, let it dry for about 20 minutes and the gel coat is just a little bit tacky and uh, that means it's time to lay the first layer of fiberglass over the top. So the whole purpose of the fiberglass is to reinforce the tooling gel coat, which on its own isn't strong enough to be demolded and then used to make carbon fibre parts. Uh, issues I had with the first moulds that I made was that the fiberglass couldn't quite conform to tight bends uh, like the ones that I'm filling in now. So I'm hoping that adding in a little bit of chopped fiberglass to these tight uh, radiuses is going to uh, make sure that there's a good adherence of the fiberglass to the back of the tooling gel coat. So with that done, here I'm just adding the first layer of fiberglass over the top. I'm just uh, cutting it out to size and then uh, I'll end up doing a bunch of relief cuts in it to try and help it conform to the shape of the mould better. And uh, what you're about to see is the fiberglass really struggling to adhere down into these sort of tight bends, which I had the fiberglass to earlier. You can constantly see it lifting up, creating a bit of an air gap between the fiberglass and the gel coat. Uh, I'm not really sure if there's any special tricks to uh, try and make the fiberglass conform better or if I'm using the wrong type of fiberglass. Uh, but if you know what I could have been doing better, leave a comment below. Right, it's now been about two hours since I applied the first layer of fiberglass and uh, the resin's at a point where it's fairly tacky, uh, not too dry, not too wet, uh, which means it's time to add another five layers of fiberglass. All right, the part has been drying for 24 hours, and now it's time to demold it. Uh, it's really the moment of truth to see whether or not the mold has been successful or not. So the post board flange can just be torn off and discarded, and it should reveal a pretty good looking gel coat underneath. With the post board flange removed, the next step is to try and get the actual part out. This was not as easy as I thought it was going to be. After finally getting one corner to budge, I used a bunch of paddles pop sticks to try and lift the part out of the mould. And after all that effort, I finally started to hear the sweet sound of the part demolding. Oh no. <sighs> what that sound actually was, was paint coming off. So having just damaged a second Pajero Evolution, I took out my frustrations by taking an angry grinder to the mould to trim off the excess fiberglass. And then I cleaned off the plasticine by running the mould under hot water and cleaning it with a dish brush. And then after trying a few different things to remove the paint off the inside of the mould, I ended up just sanding it back with some 600 and then 1200 grit sandpaper. Alright, now that we've made our mould, uh, next step is to make the actual carbon fibre piece. Uh, big picture, 50,000 foot overview of how to do that with resin infusion moulding is that we're going to firstly wax up the mould using the mirror gloss once again using about five layers. Uh, then we're going to lay down our first layer of carbon fibre, followed by a layer of this core material, which will help add a bit of strength to the part. Not really necessary on a piece like this, but I figure, hey, why not? Then we're going to do two more layers of carbon fibre over the top of that, and then that's going to be followed by a layer of this peel ply. 
Uh, this is a non-stick layer, uh, which will sort of ensure that the carbon fiber and all the subsequent layers above that don't stick to each other. On top of the peel ply then comes the uh, resin infusion mesh. This just helps the resin uh, infuse evenly throughout the entire part. We're gonna stick in a few of these plugs, uh, which are gonna be for the vacuum and the resin infusion lines. And then around the entire outside of the mold, we're gonna uh, use this spiral wrap, uh, which is gonna help the resin infuse evenly throughout the part. With, that, with all that done, then we're gonna uh, put a layer of this, uh, sorry, just put a, uh, a perimeter of this uh, gum tape around the outside of the mold, and then stick the vacuum bag over the top. So the release wax is applied with one cloth for wax on and another one for wax off. I've always had issues with the carbon fibre sticking to the corners of moulds, so I'll always pay a bit of extra attention to those. And I'll do about five layers of the wax. I've also got a PVC release agent, which I haven't tried yet, but I'll probably try that in subsequent parts. For laying down the carbon fibre, I'll use a little bit of spray glue to help the carbon fibre sit in the mould. Without this, carbon fibre tends to slide around a little bit and uh, just makes the whole process pretty difficult. That being said, I'm about to make my first mistake of the whole process. I don't push the carbon fibre down to the corners of the mould enough and the uh, results of that are what you'll see in part two. Peel pliers laid over the top and then trimmed to a size where it covers all of the carbon fibre. Then on top of that I put the resin infusion mesh which I hold in place with a little bit of the gum tape which is the same tape I use to hold the vacuum bag around the outside. And then around the entire outside of the mould I put the spiral wrap in just held in place again with the gum tape. And then over the top of the spiral wrap goes the vacuum bag connection plugs. And then around the outside goes the gum tape. This is what's going to hold down the vacuum bag to the mould. And this part is really important to press down the gum tape into the mould because this stuff adheres best when uh, there's a lot of pressure applied to it. And here I'm making pleats. These pleats just allow the vacuum bag to conform into the shape of the mold because uh, the vacuum bag isn't very flexible and without these you'd just be left with big voids inside the mold. I think this is where I made an another mistake. Uh, I don't think these pleats were quite big enough uh, and didn't quite allow the vacuum bag to go completely into the corners of the mold. Uh, with that done then the hoses are connected into the mold using the gum tape and then that's just pushed into the vacuum bag connectors. So just to give you a uh, really broad overview of this whole setup, we've got the vacuum pump here, which has a line going into this resin catch pot on the side here. Resin catch pot has a pressure gauge on it, which is gonna tell us how, how good the vacuum is on the whole system. And then out of the top here is another hose going into the uh, mold. Uh, and then this last hose here is gonna be what uh, goes into the liquid resin, uh, which is gonna be drawn into the part and uh, you know, eventually you might get a bit of the resin coming up through this hose, which will then go and get stuck inside this pot. So the next step now is to do a vacuum drop test where we're going to pull a vacuum on the whole system and uh, just leave it for probably 15 minutes or so and see if the pressure drops at all, which will indicate if we get any air inside this mould. Uh, and obviously getting any air inside a vacuum with wet resin in it is going to create a whole bunch of bubbles and be a real mess. And without even turning the catch pot, I mean the vacuum pump off, I can already hear there's a pretty big vacuum leak here somewhere. This little section here seems to have a bit of an issue, so I'm just going to turn the pump off and add a bit more uh, of this sealant tape around this area. Uh, one little gotcha I've found with some of my previous moulds have been uh, that this uh, resin infusion mesh is a little bit coarse and if you press on the vacuum bag on, onto the infusion mesh, that can create a lot of little tiny pinholes which will mean you won't be able to get a proper vacuum.
And then after fiddling around with the gum tape for a little bit longer, it looked like I finally had a vacuum that was going to hold. Alright, I'm back after about another 20 minutes and it looks like the vacuum has held this time. Uh, getting the vacuum to hold on these moulds uh, is probably one of the most frustrating parts in the resin infusion process. Uh, first few moulds I've done uh, took forever to get a seal. I ended up having to uh, paint resin all over one of them just to try and get, to get it to seal. Um, issues I had with it were uh, that I wasn't using enough layers of fiberglass on the mould. I was only using three layers of this fiberglass and then uh, there'd be little tiny pinholes running through the gel coat, through the fiberglass and then uh, basically creating an air path out through the bottom of the mould, uh, which was really frustrating. Um, and then the other issues I've had are not having a big enough flange around the part. This one's still a lot smaller than I'd like it. Next time I'm going to make a far bigger one, probably one about 10 centimetres. Um, having a big enough flange just means that you can uh, basically seal the part up really easily. You've got lots of room to work with, lots of place to put extra tape down if you need. Alright, now that that's all done, uh, we're going to mix up some resin and uh, do the infusion. Well, this video is starting to get a bit too long, so I'm going to chop it up and turn it into a two-parter. Uh, in the next video, which I'll upload in a couple of days, for real this time, I'll uh, actually show you some carbon fiber pieces being pulled out of the mould. And uh, spoiler alert, the first one doesn't come out too well, but the second one does. I'm also going to increase my usage of the word flange in the next video, because I just haven't used it enough in this one. Uh, remember to check out pavesgarage.com if you need some Pajero Evolution shock absorbers or some mud flaps which are suitable for Pajero Evolutions or just about any other four-wheel drive you need. Uh, and also, have some nice key rings. Uh, use the discount code RallyRaid for 10% off store-wide and remember to like, subscribe, comment, share, all that sort of stuff to uh, help the channel grow. See you next time.